second one and we just wanted to do something a little bit different, something a little bit outside the box and we thought um, if we did an album but basically in two stages so you've got a six track EP and then a, another six track EP, we were planning to kind of just do them about a year apart or even less and just give us some time to write and you know logistics of life and everything but um, also, also kind of like take the first half on the road and do a few shows and like kind of like just like a momentum thing where like you, you do a bunch of songs, you go out on the road, you come back in, you write and like you keep that momentum and like that inspiration going. Then, but yeah, but yeah, then so there's COVID, a part to the story, yeah. Yeah, but then yeah, COVID hit. So we we embarked on the first one and then we went into some after we sorry on the second one uh, we got yeah there was a bunch of like lockdowns and went through all sorts of floods. Yeah, yeah and then yeah most recently floods yeah. and all that sort of stuff and yeah. so we had studio time that got pushed back and all sorts of stuff so in the end we just ended up embracing it we we're like okay well it's taken way longer than we thought it would so then we really took our time on the second one and you know put a lot of effort into writing and production and stuff like that. so roofing and yelling part one are they are they recorded in two different places as well or they are the same yeah. two so yeah. there's yeah, revolver so and 660s yeah, yeah yeah so we i mean we kind of it was you know, of course we came out and get like what's available when we were ready to do it um so we did the drums and the sort of backbone of it um of the first half back oh no at, at, round, um, head? round head oh round head and oh, then yeah. we did like all the kind of vocals and guitar overdubs and stuff uh at um i sure it was like two years Demo. ago depot on, in yeah, um, and then so this time we kind of hunted around. We, we looked at doing um, round here again, but it kind of wasn't available on the dates that we wanted. Uh, so we ended up going to Revolver in Waiuku, which was so awesome. Yeah, like just like this really eclectic kind of studio, like hidden away mm. with like really cool little features and like big, big kind of stone room and, um, and heaps of really yeah. cool gear. Yeah, like yeah. heaps of cool old hands. And just vibes. Real cool. yeah. So what kind of amps were you guys using? Like, sounds like Marshalls. Uh, yeah, Marshalls? I think Kyle went through. Yeah, I know he used a Fender a bit, and I think maybe there was a Marshall in there, an old Marshall, and then I just used an old Vox. Oh like, yeah. Uh, like an original AC. '60s sort of thing. Yeah, like an AC30, but it was a like a hidden cab, yeah, kind of like that big. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it was called, but man, it was like the nicest box we ever made. It was so cool. Just sort of gentle overdrive, sort of just yeah, just yeah. nice and warm. Yeah, 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 nice and warm and just real ballsy, you know, just real kind of crunchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just real good. So, um, what's the process for writing? Like, how did you make the SOS? Yeah, um, so there's probably um, a couple of ways that we write. Sometimes um, a song will start with just a, a riff, or um, I might have like a sort of 60 second idea of a bit of a verse and a chorus or something. And then I'll sort of bring that to the room, or sometimes Kyle will write some riffs and just send them through to the band chat. And then we kind of get together and we'll expand on them and make them into a song. Or sometimes we just write songs in the moment in a rehearsal room. So I think Sink or Swim started with a, I did a little bit of a demo at home of some, a bit of an idea. And then we just kind of got together and fleshed that out into a full song, really. So all our songs, have everyone involved at, at, at some point and some of them are just totally written from scratch as we're four dudes in a room just playing. Yeah, yeah. So it sort of changes per song. What's your dream band to open for? I mean, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Zeppelin, Beatles, yeah. Tom Petty. Um, now, I don't know, there's probably tons of bands, but obviously uh, we're, we're a pretty big Foo's influence, so Foo Fighters would be one. Foo Fighters, yeah. Queens of the Stone Age, yeah. 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 Um, to do that. Then for good Whatever, whoever will have us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you fans of the Desert Sessions with John Lennon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I asked this a bit more too. So if you can think of a band member, living or dead, to replace one of the members, if they fall sick and then someone has to replace, so uh, who would replace Charlie? John Bonham. John Bonham? Okay, <laughs> straight to the top. Yeah, and I, won't be getting, and I won't be getting my dog back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put you down for Jimmy Chamberlain. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Um, who could yeah. replace Alex? Yeah, we just yeah, actually, yeah, 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 actually, yeah, no, but that's not, that's not far off. Mm-hmm. Jones is pretty good. Yeah. I had, um, I had Lenny down. Oh, yeah. 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 Lenny yeah. would do the job. Yeah. yeah. Um, who could replace Kyle? Adam Jones? Tool? Tool? Oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's got to be someone that thinks a little bit outside the box. Like, yeah, Kyle's, yeah. like, quite a, I'm a real, like, straight guitar player, melodic kind of guy, and I think Kyle is quite, he's the total opposite, so he's really kind of eclectic, and when there's a riff that's kind of simple or straight, he's like, hey, well, what if we do this kind of weird thing, and it makes it, more yeah, just more interesting, so right, I think right. when we combine our kind of styles, it, it kind of gets that dead favors thing. Yeah. Oh, right. So I think Adam Jones is kind of a bit similar to that, he's just quite outside the box, and, you know, doesn't always just do the normal kind of run-the-mill thing. Are you, are you guys dropped in? Some songs, hmm. some, mostly just standard E. Oh yeah. A couple songs are dropped D. We've got one song that's drop C. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I hear him down as Malcolm Young. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. hearing you. Yeah, that would be me. Yeah, oh, right. we have done some ACDC covers. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who could replace Jared? Anthony Kiedis. Anthony <laughs> Jesus Christ! Because he's, oh, he's not much of a Kiedis fan. <laughs> I am. Um, actually, what a showman, Chad Smith can take my job. Um, no, no, um, no, we've always, always kind of clashed on that. Um, I, just, I mean, like, it's, it feels stadiumly obvious, obvious, but like, maybe Brawl. Oh, yeah. But also, he, I, I'd pick him to maybe replace me on drums. Yeah. So, like, he could do both. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I had, I had you down for, even though it's a New Zealander, John Too Good. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I like it. I'll take that. Yeah. 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 Happy with that. So, um, what was the tour going down? Nelson? Uh, Napier tomorrow. Napier? Yeah. Right. Okay, and nice. then um, Turonga the week after that, and then Hamilton and Auckland the week after that. Oh, you're going north? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Okay. So going home to go to our day jobs. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so are you guys fans, so now that you've split this album in two, yeah. are you guys fans of double albums or like split EPs or anything like that? Or um, I'd, I'd, I'd say definitely, but like if we were to do it again, I would, you know, it's, it's real complicated, we've all got like, obviously families and jobs and, and all that stuff, so it's like time, time with us, like finding the time with all of our all together is probably the hardest part, yeah. actually part of our thing. Yeah. Plus an engineer, plus a yeah. uh, producer as well, so you've got six people you're trying to get yeah. But if, we did, it, yeah. but if we did it again, I'd absolutely do it again, but I would try and carve out more time to kind of do it all roughly at once, either all at once or like, you know, like really book it in, so you're doing it. Bang bang, rather yeah, than yeah. like two years apart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The one thing I will say is that I really, I did really enjoy the kind of the journey or the transition mm-hmm. or the growth between the yeah. two EPs. The the second, the, the first EP kind of had uh, something different from the first album, but I think as as there was two years between these two EPs, it's kind of you can really see a growth and a mm-hmm. bit of a transition with the music. And like, I think that's all partly as well with um, we work with Chris which on the first one was the first time we'd worked with him, but then we went to do the second EP, we already had our kind of routine, and you know, we knew each other's styles and tastes and stuff, so we were able to kind of push the boat out a bit further as well. So I do kind of like that. I listened to both the EPs back to back um, a couple, about a week ago. Mm-hmm. I've never done that, and just kind of seeing the journey of, from the start to the finish of the 12 songs is quite interesting. Do you feel like Riffing in the Young Part 1 is more optimistic? Uh, I'd say the other way around, really. Oh, yeah. I'd say the, the, I mean, in terms of like theme and lyrically, the first one's way more darker and oh, okay. um, a bit more uh, negative and shitty life <laughs> vibe. Mm. And then the, the second one's really quite the opposite. So. Oh, the other one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool guys. Yeah. Well, um, good luck with the tour. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the to the show tonight. Yeah, it's gonna Thanks, be fun. Cool. Really looking forward to yeah. it. Thanks Cheers. for having us. Cheers, mate. Cool. Cheers.